the Miami Heat defeat the horrible, shitty, weak, pathetic Houston Rockets 120 to 113 tonight in Miami. Welcome back to the Team to Beat Miami Heat basketball channel. My name is Amir. Before I get into the recap of tonight's game, just want to thank everybody for their continued support of the channel. I'm getting really close to 500 subscribers. Been putting in a lot of work and effort, so it would mean a lot if you could subscribe. So before we do also get into the recap, I just want to introduce Katino Mobley. He's back on the channel. What's up, Vonnie? How are you doing, man? Hey, what's up, buddy? Not much, man. Just a little more elated um, that the Miami Heat defeated the Rockets tonight because I know you guys beat us earlier in the season. Is that correct? We've already played once, or is that preseason? Uh, I think it might have been preseason. Was it preseason? I don't know. You made it. You were very uh, happy when anytime the Rockets beat the Heat and vice versa, we always like throw nice jabs at each other, right? Um, friendly jabs. So I guess this was the first game of the season. So um, yeah, Bonnie is a hardcore Houston Rockets fan. He's been on the channel a few times. We've talked about a few different things, but I wanted him to be here tonight to talk about the ass whooping that the Rockets received from the Miami Heat tonight. Um, it was a bounce back game for the Miami Heat. Um, they were on a five game road trip, West Coast road trip. And so pretty big win, honestly. Like last year, two years ago, the Heat being the Rockets, would it be considered a good win? Because the Rockets have been shit, obviously, but they've definitely turned it around this year. And I, I get a lot of good information from Von Eek here, um, who is our correspondent, who tells us how good the Rockets have been um, throughout the year. But we know that with Eme, like they have an identity on defense. They're the fourth best defensive team in the NBA, which is shocking. But they have some really tough-minded players, and they had some good players, defensive players out with Tari Eason and uh, their joker, Dylan Brooks. So um, pretty impressive defensively, honestly. I haven't really watched too many Rockets games. I've seen maybe one or two so far this season. But they're a young and upcoming team. They have young talent. Sangoon's one of the most underrated players in the NBA, but he's only in his third year. So, of course, I think in the next two years, he's going to expand even further, probably be like a 25-point score, get more recognition. You got Jalen Green, who, you know, represents Fresno. Vonning and I are from Fresno. He, he played in high school in Fresno. So, eh, not too high in him, but he's still ignitable young talent. And then just a lot of other good pieces in terms of, like, the veterans they signed with Fred, who crushed it tonight um dylan brooks didn't play so really big win for the miami heat coming off that five row trip jimmy butler's missed eight out of the last nine games um i know you guys were missing some pieces but we were missing our best player so big win without caleb and jimmy again um i know bonnie you didn't catch the entire game but what do you think went wrong tonight you watch every rockets game you looked at the box score you saw the highlights um what do you think went wrong on your um, a couple of things. One, Sangoon in foul trouble um, when he's on the bench and uh, he's having to monitor his fouls. It is just the offense flows through him. Um, and when we utilize him like a Jokic, it uh, he always makes the right pass. He plays very self, uh, you know, selfless. And him and um, Fred uh, with pick and roll are just like there's there's it's such a go-to for us to get buckets um, he's off the court um, you could tell like those stretches where um, you know Jabari Cam uh, Jalen are just jacking up you know bad three-pointers early in the shot clock that are contested um, we just didn't have the same flow uh, of um, ball movement like I said when he's off the court and then on top of it I'd say the other thing was just that Jabari and Jalen were had a horrible shooting night I think they were like five for five for like 20 21 something like that so that's not going to cut it from your number two and number three draft picks uh, two of your starters on the road so uh, those things definitely hurt yeah I didn't I haven't looked at the box score yet so didn't have a chance to look at either side but that sounds pretty horrendous and Watching the game, yeah, Jabari looked pretty absent, um, especially in the first half. He wasn't really involved. I know he started um, getting a little more aggressive in the second half. It was pretty interesting when it came up, came to matchups. I, I saw Kyle Lowry was guarding him um, for the most part throughout the game, and that little pit bull meatball has enough weight. And when he he is such a low center of gravity, right? And and Jabari is a freaking twig, so. Um, 
he actually was like semi-successful, especially in the first half. And and I forgot who who was Lowry guarding in the playoffs against like the Celtics, and um, he was guarding someone bigger throughout. Um, I don't know, not, it could have, not it sure. Jalen at times, oh. but he has a tendency to like guard bigger players just because he's a little bit slower these days, right? So it's a little bit hard for him to guard a Jalen or even a Fred. Fred's too elusive, man. That guy's like sneaky elusive dude with his like hesitations and crossovers he's a good playmaker too obviously he's averaging like eight assists his points are down but excuse me <coughs> but yeah lowry did a good job i think guarding him um jalen just takes some horrible shots at times right like he's got like the tyler hero syndrome he's got a little bit better this year i think tyler he's taking better shots um he's been more efficient but they're too flashy. You know, those guys try to take the, the side step, step back, fade away opportunities when they could just pull up and, and shoot over a smaller defender. So um happy that those guys suffered tonight. Um, Bam was also um, dealing with foul trouble too in the first half as well. So he was in the first quarter specifically. He had two fouls. He got his third one in the early in the second quarter. Um, so he had to sit out a lot of that game, but he was super quiet as well. So him and Sangoon were both relatively quiet in the first half, but then they both stepped up, obviously, which we knew they would do. Bam took only three shots in the first half, um, but he came out really strong in, in the third quarter. Um, yeah, I think one of the things I noticed too is the Heat just put out more effort, which I was surprised because I thought the younger team on the road they have a bad road record. What are you guys, 3-10 and 10 before the game or 3-11? and 11? I thought you guys would just try to put more effort in knowing that you guys have a bad road record and you need to improve on that end if you actually want to be a real playing um, contender, I guess, because you guys are probably going to be in that, what, 7-10 to 10 range probably throughout the year. Um, yeah, did you notice that there was like just a lack of effort, um, I guess, defensively, I guess, because – you guys should have done better, I think, because the Miami Heat offensive rating, we're like middle of the tier, you know, like offense is an issue or, or leading or second leading scorer and best player was out tonight, right? So I thought you guys would probably handle us a little bit better, but it just seemed like you guys were less motivated tonight for some reason. Um, I think, like you said, uh, just during the course of the year already, I mean, we are we play completely different on the road uh, than we do at home um super strong home record and like you said we've got three road wins so far i thought uh coming into this game we had a chance this is actually going to be a really really hard stretch for us you guys are coming back home tonight um the rockets are on a six game road trip started starting with miami um i was optimistic just because i knew jimmy was going to be out so i figured it would be a good way for us to start the road trip um but like I said, just the lack of shot making in this game, um, it just bit us. Um, and then on top of it, Miami and Rock the Rockets, like it's just always one of those matchups where the Rockets typically struggle. And um, I mean, I think I even heard it during the game. Tyler Heroes uh, got his best um, career average against the Rockets uh, of any team that he ever plays against. So he always shows up. I don't know what it is about Houston. Um, but he, he averages like 25 points a game, uh, when he plays us. And so it, he played great tonight. He did. Yeah. And you guys were shooting really well in the first half. I know what kept you alive because, um, the heat were shooting 53% at the end of the second quarter. It was 59. It was tied 59 all right. I think Fred got an and one, um, or Jabari. I can't remember. I think it was Jabari got an and one put back to tie the game um and we were shooting 53 percent to 44 which is not too bad for you guys but um we had less turnovers more rebounds at that point as well and so i think one of the heat announcers eric reed was saying that like the heat should be up they were up by like seven or eight i think in the second quarter and then you guys came charging back um you guys scored 32 we scored 25 in the second quarter and you guys were 10 for 20 from three. So like Jalen was initially hitting some threes. Fred was like three for three or four for four in the first half from deep. So like he was keeping you afloat, but you guys were shooting efficiently and we both had seven turnovers at half. Um, the heat were out rebounding you, which is surprising because the heat aren't the best rebounding team. We don't have 
like much size, but neither did you really, honestly. Like you have how how tall is Sangoon? Like six ten? Uh yeah. I think yeah, six ten, six eleven. And then Eason is the was the power forward. Well, Eason's out. He didn't play. Oh, oh Tari, that's my boy. I like Tari better. Um no, Jay Sean. Jay Sean, he's the power forward, right? So he's not he's not No, he's like way undersized. He's like a PJ Tucker dude. Yeah, so okay. So it makes sense why the Heat were leading in that category. But yeah, you guys were shooting super well. Like I was super frustrated that you guys were I mean, the Heat were shooting great too, 41% um, at halftime. But you guys were shooting 10 for 20. And then the third quarter, I think, is when the Miami Heat like regained control. They outscored you guys 32 to 23. And that's where Bam uh, was super effective and aggressive. So in the first half, because he was doing foul trouble, he only had three shot attempts, like two or four points coming into the second half. Um, and then he scored six points, like, immediately within the first three minutes and in that quarter he went five for five from the field in the second half bam was seven for nine had he had a double double in the second half basically so like he he woke up and he was playing a lot more aggressively after he stopped dealing with the foul trouble he had 18 points and 10 boards just in the second half which is super impressive right so we needed him to step up especially with jimmy butler out tyler hero was stepping up we have a lot of other folks we can walk through the box score um, but yeah, I think the, the turning point of the game when the Miami heat regained control, because it was back and forth, but Miami was pretty much ahead most of the game, I would say. Um, but you guys did come back a little bit and the Miami heat did what they typically always do is they, they blow almost blow double digit leads. We were up by like 16 or something at one point in the fourth quarter with like eight minutes to go. And I think you guys brought it down to six, I think was the closest. Yep. Yeah. So we did a good job, I think, of ball movement. Like we focused a lot on the pick and roll with Tyler and Bam. Um, Jovic got some play tonight, which was exciting. Um, he didn't shoot really well, but he was just all over the place. There's a lot of plays where he got offensive rebounds. He got multiple assists to Jaime Jaquez Jr., who we can talk about in a second. Um, but yeah, he got some good, good play. And I was excited that he got the opportunity again. And of course, we're undermanned. So we needed him to play out there and we needed to inject some youth because the, the Rockets are a super young team. So I'd say, I'd say the uh, other uh, really, really impactful player that you guys had tonight with his veteran savvy was Kevin Love. He had a lot of just smart veteran, end one contact, right rebound, right place. Um, just the timely possessions of like whenever the Rockets did cut the lead, he seemed to be the guy that got the the next bucket. And like I said, kind of killed the momentum of it. Yeah, he's been crushing it like the last two weeks or so. Um, he has definitely solidified himself as the, the backup to Bam. So initially in last year, he was starting next to Bam Adebayo. And they didn't do too great when we, like, we didn't acquire him, I guess, when we signed him as a buyout candidate. I think the last, like, 20 games of the season before we went into the playoffs, and it wasn't working well next to Bam. You would assume it would because he could spread the floor, stretch for, but um, he did better in the playoffs. Like, during that playoff run, which we went to the finals, obviously, like, Kevin and Bam had some really good minutes together. And because of that, Kevin started the season – as a starter, but then for some reason we had to put him on the bench um, because I think players like Thomas Bryant and Orlando Robinson from Fresno state. Yes, sir. Got to see him live. Um, they're not as effective as we thought they would be. They're fine. They're serviceable. They're ready, you know, but like we just, I think it's a better fit to have Kevin coming off the bench Um as a stretch four, as a, like a really good rebounder. And of course for his full court two handed like passes, like which have been spectacular. So he's been crushing it, dude. I think he's had five double doubles in a row now, which is crazy. Um, 15, seven and four. Um, that's super impactful for someone who's 35 years old um, and coming off the bench, only playing 23 minutes. So I do remember a play where he got an offensive rebound. He faked it. Like he was going to, go to the baseline, turn back around, got a player in the air and 
got to and one like layup with like a second left to I think end the third quarter, which was like a, a turning point for sure. Any other thoughts on on the Rockets? Any kudos yeah. to the players on your end, or like anything you can look forward uh, to from you know, this I'll, game? Yeah, I'll, I'd like I just uh, shout out to Ime uh, for uh, Cam Whitmore. Um, obviously, he was the summer league MVP. He's been dominating the G League, um, and over the course of the last week, um, he's uh, gotten some minutes, and that's because of Tari's and you know uh, Dylan Brooks's injuries. Um, Cam very much has similarities, in my opinion, to somebody like a Jalen Brown. Um, he is still 19 years old, super raw, and I think that's why they've also, obviously, from a depth chart. Uh, perspective that's why they've had him in the G League but I'm just kind of glad that he's getting some NBA minutes I mean even tonight like he just he made bad decisions right like a 19 year old would right like there was one play there was one play where all he had to do was swing the ball to Fred he was wide open for a three and he held it and he shot it and he bricked it and it was just a selfish it was a it was a totally selfish uh, shot and um, I think him bricking the three led to a fast break which Van Fleet ended up recovering on, got the rebound, came back, and then got the uh, bucket. But I think those are the moments that, you know, you're coaching the 19-year-old kid in terms of like, hey, you play the right way. You play for the, you know, play for each other. Instead of he's uh, like, I feel like out there a little bit trying to earn his name and val- feel like he, you know, validate his minutes. But I think ultimately, like he, I'm kind of scared to say this, but I think he's showing more potential. And I think he's doing a little bit even better of a job than- is yeah um wow. and I, think that, I, I think that Jalen um Jalen is he's still to jail this is you know Jalen is still young and he's still figuring it out this is his first year playing with Ime and trying to find out where he fits but I do think that Jalen needs to figure it out pretty quick because there's a you know there's some really really young hungry uh, talent that's behind him if he doesn't and where Jalen's um contract is coming up here very very soon he needs to figure that out because he is absolutely um does not justify like a max deal or anything like that as far as an extension comes due i think that uh sangoon obviously has proven that but uh jalen uh has a lot to prove still how old is he what was the third year what is he 21 22 now uh jalen i think he's 21 he'll be 22 wild yeah i i don't I don't buy into it. I I don't know. Like I feel like he's he's not like a he's not like a Jordan Poole type esque. But like I don't know. He's kind of like a Tyler Hero type guy, a Jordan Poole, um, an Anthony Simons type kind of guard. I, I don't know. I, like I don't even know if I put him there yet. I think Jalen, at least from what he's done, especially this year. I mean, he's regressed a little bit this year because obviously we've gotten Fred Sangoon's. You know, the offense is running through him. But uh, Jalen's got to figure out what his role is, right? Like, I mean, he's he's got athleticism, and he's supposed to be a shooter. Uh, but his shooting touch has definitely been lacking. Um, and then his athleticism can only get you so far, right? Like, you drive to the basket, you got to be able to finish. Uh, you got to be able to draw contact. And, I mean, he could – he his ceiling, he could be, like, you know, a hero or one of those guys that you're talking about. But then on the other end of that, like, he could end up being, like – I don't know, like a weak version of Tim Hardaway Jr. or somebody like that, you know, Jordan like Clark, Jordan Clarkson kind of like not even I don't even know. if I don't even know if he's he can do that offensively. He's he's too inconsistent. He he like, you know, he has like two two really like amazing games like every 10 games. And, you know, to be in the league at this point and to be a number two pick where, you know, a franchise has given you the keys kind of to the car. Like you, you, you have to bring it every night. You can't, you know, have a, you know, three for 13 shooting night or a, you know, a four for 18 shooting night. Um, Like you can't be that guy anymore. Um, They're going to, they, they, they spent the draft capital on you. uh, And, and you, you got to be a guy that can get, you know, you got to be a bucket. You got to be able to, especially with Sangoon. Like right now we're talking about the example of the heat tonight, right? Like Sangoon goes to the bench. Like, dude, if you're the, you're the shooting guard and 
you got to you got to be the guy that's getting us buckets and that i think he i think he overthinks things a little bit um he does have a very nice shot but for some reason i think he gets in his head and when he doesn't have that rhythm and he doesn't see it fall down a couple times then he's just in this rut and um i think yeah. he's somebody that can really off of a screen like he needs to make the game easy instead of trying to drive the contact where he's still his body is still developing and he's a scrawnier guy he needs to just come off the pick get the mid-range jumper and like you know go for the twos and and work into it but like i said uh, i haven't i'm not um i'm not i'm not bailing on him but i am a little bit disappointed in how this season's played out for him i was expecting a little bit more and i was expecting him to take that next step up and um i think that's i'm speaking for the rockets fan base when i say that i mean every game's uh i think all of us are kind of uh, frustrated with larry's hat and we want to see him succeed uh, we want it. We need him. You know what I mean? We need him to succeed. But you see Cam and a couple of these other guys, like I said, behind him in rotation. I mean, even, Tar, even Tari Easton, right? Uh, Tari Easton's kind of like our Hawkes for our team. Uh, he's a guy that we don't really run plays for him, but he's a, just a dog. He rebounds. He's in the right, you know, right position. He makes, you know, he's made time. Yeah. And, and he, you know, then you look at the box, the box score and he has like 17 and eight with like three steals. And you're like, dude, this guy's just doing like everything, you know, during garbage time plays basically to get his stats. So, but not in uh, garbage time, meaningful, correct. Oh, yeah. meaningful minutes. Yeah, no, just yeah. to clarify. Like, yeah. and you're like, well, how the hell did he have like, how did he have 12, 8, and 6, and 2? Or like, how did he have like 15, 3, and 1? Like, every night's kind of different, right? It just yep. stuff the sheet. That's that time A for sure. Yeah. Who's obviously a better player um, and will be a better player than Cam. Um, I like them actually. I, I was talking shit, obviously, because I wanted the Heat to pick him initially. Because, like, I, I think I remembered Jaime from the uh, Final Four run. Because I only watch college in March, obviously. For someone who doesn't like college basketball, I still I still love March Madness. But, um, yeah, I was just, like, surprised when they picked Jaime Hawkes because I don't know anything about him from UCLA, really. I just remember him, his hair. Um, so I was, like, shocked hearing that Cam – was supposed to be potentially like not only lottery but like top six top seven pick yeah. falling down to 18 and super athletic and raw but just like good obviously college player and had the potential to be a star versus like Jaime has a potential to be a good NBA player right all-star let's say that Cam has he was probably touted to potentially have the ceiling of being an all-star. I think Jaime coming out of college is probably like a star, not an all-star, but a star. I guess if we can categorize it that way, right? Scrub, star, all-star, superstar, right? Um, and I mean just role player in terms of scrub, not actual scrubs like Mark Madsen or anybody like that, but um, or Swish Parker to just talk shit on former Lakers. But uh, I guess Swish was a Heat player for one year, so I guess shout out to Swish. Um, I digress, but um yeah cam i guess had the, the the bullshit injury or whatever they they stated and you know it's probably attitude issues or just defensively i think we could talk about that i'm sure you probably notice or uh, that he's i think they mentioned that he wasn't the best defensively or i just don't think he like was able to fit into a spo system at spo defensive system and to contribute immediately like i think that might have been an issue too but um yeah he looked good like he looked like really explosive he had like one nice like Euro step layup where he got a bucket. I think it was over Bam and someone else like Haywood Highsmith, who's no slouch um, on defense. And then he had a, a nice looking three pointer. Um, I think a nice mid range. You know, you could see the the talent there. Um, but the, another boneheaded play that you forgot to say was that he was above the break. I think at the like free throw line area, I guess, and he had a a, a wide open lane. Um, so he went for a, a dunk attempt, but um kevin love uh mr savvy was like at the dotted line all he had to do was when he saw him accelerate from the free throw line take one step out of the dotted line and literally just stood there and waited for him to go aerial and basically he collided landed on kevin love and we got the charge right so like 19 year old trying to show out and press you know trying to get that highlight if you will you know just kind of young rookie mistakes for a 19 year old who's not getting a lot of time so spot on that's exactly what i'm talking about in terms of like he's just he's he's got a chip on his shoulder he's out there trying to prove something still but like as he settles down and you know as he you know Ime and fred and all these guys kind of speak to him like you could just see the talent man he, he he's he's gonna be special 
for sure. Just like my boy Jaime, who was the second month in a row Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month, dude. Hey, so, uh, I'm a trivia time. Do you know who the uh, Western Conference Player of the Week was last week? Alperin Sengun. Did you just look it up? No. What do you mean look it up? I just said it immediately. You think it, I had time to type that? That would have been like this. <laughs> or I would have been like... I have my phone on the bleep the yeah. box work to go talk about that next one. No. Yeah. Good stuff, man. All right. Let me ask you this row before we we end. Um, and I want to go just quickly over the box score since I didn't have a chance to look at it. But what are your thoughts on Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson? Uh, Tyler Hero played a great game. Um, I and think, just their season too, as well, not just this game. Yeah, I, I think I think he's had a really really strong season. Obviously, Jimmy's missed a lot of games. Um, I think uh, Tyler's just done a really good job in terms of stepping up, and then his consistency. Um, I mean, very seldomly now, like you know what I mean. We're at what I was talking about, Jalen yeah. Green here. Uh, Tyler's just kind of like like I said. He, I mean, he's kind of put himself in a number one type of a position and then a number two. And I think ultimately when Jimmy's back and the heat are healthy, uh, this type of gameplay and experience from him is only going to make the heat that much better as the season progresses. Because uh, like I said, he could rise to the occasion when he needs to, and he really doesn't need to uh, uh, accept, like I said, in these uh, more situational type games Um, in regard to Duncan Robinson, uh, Duncan Robinson, obviously we joke a lot, right? Um, We talk about his contract and all that stuff, which you, Arguably, right, a season or two ago when he dropped off with the shooting percentages, yes, it was a bad contract and it was an overpay because he wasn't producing at that uh, amount per year. Um, But obviously, I mean, you could tell last year, uh, especially into the playoffs and later in the year, you could tell that he worked on his game to not just be a three-point specialist, right? And if you're going to play somebody, you know, four years, 80 or a hundred million dollars or whatever it is to be a three point specialist. And then all of a sudden you're shooting like low 30% uh, percentile. That's not going to cut it. So he ended up learning how to actually drive up and under, um, he, you know, finishing the paint a little bit and at least keep the defense honest, right? Because when you're just a three point shooter, they know that's what you're going to do. Right. So the defense closes out on you. I'm not going to go for your ball fake because I know you're not going to drive. I know, I know you want to shoot the three. Now that he's kind of added that element to his game, what it does is the defense has to be a little bit more honest and it actually does open up the three for him because if the defense doesn't commit, he can drive past you and make that play. So I think him learning how to play his position better and broaden his game has one improved his three point shot again uh, by keeping the defense honest. And then two, like I said, he's, he's actually now he's not the worst contract in the league, right? Like now he actually, he's kind of, he's, he's brought his game back to where he was when he got the deal. Right. So um, yeah, I'm really happy for Duncan, man. I always liked him. Yeah. How can you not root for the white boy, but he's better than what he was, you know, in terms of that contract because he was shooting 42 ish percent, I guess. Like he had a couple years where he was in the high, like 44, 42. Then it went down to like 38 to 35 out of the rotation. Um, If you're not hitting threes, then and you can't play defense, which is something we didn't you didn't bring up because you don't yeah. obviously follow and watch every heat game, but he basically has improved on both ends of the floor. Like he has improved much more as a playmaker and a dribbler um offensively than he has defensively, but I think he's moving his feet better laterally now and he's less handsy, um, which has been helpful and and I think the refs knew that he was a shitty defender and he was holding players a lot, grabbing players a lot, uh, hand checking a lot and trying to get away with it, which he didn't. So they would call so many fouls on him and he would foul out a lot in the past. But now he's getting the respect from the refs. They realize that like this guy's actually playing better, rotating better, moving better, using his feet, trying to beat players to spots and whatnot um, and not using his hands. So it's kind of like crazy to see that like he's not getting those shitty fouls but you know who's took taken his place the rook basically rookie he's not a rookie but second year player Nikola Jovic he's not he's not the best defender that's why he wasn't in the rotation throughout the year he's finally getting some time the past week or so he's played like 10 games this year total and he is like averaging four fouls per game and he's playing like 
18 minutes a game. He's like, reminds me of Duncan Robinson where like he can't move his feet and you know, he's just hand is got in the cookie jar basically. Um, and he's getting so many fouls called on him, which is just so frustrating to watch, but Duncan improved on that end. And then just putting the, being able to put the ball on the floor to your point, because whenever he would normally pump fake from three, he would do a sidestep, right? Like he would stay on that perimeter. Now, if, if you rush at him, He's going to pump fake, put the ball on the floor. He's going to drive, pull the defender out from the paint, and then he's going to like find Bam on a lob, or he's going to find Jaime Jaquez, who's been cutting every single game at least five to seven times. And through those five to seven cuts, Jaime's getting at least two to three layups or dunks per game, uncontested, right? Because Duncan's driving to the hoop, Tyler's driving to the hoop, getting that attention, and he's getting gravity pulled now outside of the three-point line, which is kind of crazy to see because usually that gravity that Duncan would create would open up the, the lanes for Jimmy Butler, the mid-range for, for Bam at a bio. But now he's pulling out that, that rim protector, essentially, which is kind of nuts. He had seven assists tonight, um, which is wild. He had the same amount of assists as Fred Van Fleet. He had the most assists tied across the board. Him and Fred had seven assists. Like This is Duncan Robinson coming off the bench. You know, 14 points, three boards, seven rebounds, like one steal. Uh, he did foul out, though, which is kind of funny tonight. Um, <laughs> uh, he did foul out on a bullshit call because that was a charge. I don't know if you remember it. But anyway, um, we were way over time. But let me just run through the stats real quick. Jaime Jaquez, 14-4-4. and four. Great game for Jaime again. 39 minutes. He was 5-11 for 11 from the field, 1-2 for two from three, one steal. Um, Tyler Hero, great game, to your point. Always plays good against the Rockets, apparently. I didn't know that. 28, 3 and 3, 10 for 20, 5 for 10, super efficient. Bounce back game from Tyler. He had nine points against the Suns, I believe. Um, he was like five for 18. So huge bounce back there. Nikola Jovic starting only 21 minutes, but six points, eight rebounds, six assists. He was two for nine from the field, which isn't great, but he also had two steals and two blocks. He was all over the place. He crushed it. Kyle Lowry, he got hurt. I don't know what happened. I don't know what he injured, but like he left, I think, in the third quarter. Six points, didn't really do much. Duncan, as I already mentioned, had a great game. Uh, J. Rich playing really well again. Also a good pickup, former Miami Heat player for the minimum. He had 12 points, two boards, two assists, four for six from the field, two for three from three. And Kayla, 15, seven, and four. So really good outing for the Heat. On the Rocket side, we'll go through this quickly. Uh, Fred Van Vliet kept you guys afloat. Um, no one really played that great outside of him and Sangoon, but he balled it up. 32 points, five boards, seven assists, 10 for 22 from the field, seven for 14 from three, which was huge, 50%. He was four for four. That's, I think, what kept you guys in the first half um, and not going down double digits. So he did really well. Two blocks too, man. That guy's like five foot like seven, like Spud Webb without the athleticism. But Huge game for him. Wasn't enough. Uh, Jay Sean Tate, nine points, four boards, one assist. Um, Sangoon was quiet. To your point, he did have um, – he did foul out, actually, too. I didn't realize him and Duncan had something in common tonight. But he did have those three early fouls, too. Um, wasn't really effective. Wasn't shooting too much in the first half. I think Bam's length was kind of bothering him. But then he's like, I'm not afraid of anybody. Like, this guy's a freaking gangster, dude. This guy's baby joker. Had his nice back to the basket, which is atypical in this NBA, right? Like he can like face up, spot up, obviously, but he likes to do the spin move where he goes spins baseline and does like that up and under, or he goes up for the dunk, which is nice. Um, really good player, super underrated. Um, so yeah, he did really well. Nine for fifteen from the field. Uh, Jabari horrible. I guess you're right. Three for thirteen, only ten points, six boards, one for five from three, um, and Jalen only eleven points, but. Five boards, six assists. He had some good pick and roll action um, with Sangoon. I think his playmaking was better tonight. Um, his shot was off, but he did find um, Sangoon on a bunch of pick and rolls. Um, I think in the second half, which was good. But two for ten, but two for eight. Like his appetite for shots were all at three, basically, right? And like, how many of those were open? I don't remember. Probably two of them. He probably had six tough shots. Probably I would say or contested. Um, and if he's super athletic, I know he, he probably needs to be trying to attack the rim. Because, I mean, Bam's a good 
defensive player, but he's not the best shot blocker, right? Rim protector. And the Heat are really small. So I think he missed an opportunity for taking it to the rim. Because, like, the Miami Heat's biggest issue this offseason or the season, Vani, is, like, point of attack defending. So a lot of guards typically destroy us at the point of attack and get into the paint. So I think that was a missed opportunity. And, yeah, no one else really stood out except for Cam. 17 minutes, 11 points, 6 boards, 5 for 8. So... Good game for the Miami Heat. Impressive win. I'm happy. Sorry that your team sucks. Sorry that they lost. Sorry that they're probably not going to make the playoffs this year. And they'll probably never win a championship again. Um, but we're both Niner fans, so at least we have that in common. Um, and hopefully the Niners are going to win the Super Bowl this year. We'll see. we got the number one seed in the bye. So happy for that. Anyway, thanks for joining me tonight, buddy. Really appreciate it. Take care.